if, if you're newly diagnosed, the first thing that needs to be done is to determine the extent of the cancer and the kind of the cancer. That would mean a very careful review of the pathology by somebody who's experienced in reading the pathology and understands what they're talking about because you have to know what you're treating. Secondly, you have to know how extensive it is. It's what we call staging the cancer. And we can talk about specific tests and uh, new tests that are available for staging. Gallium-68, Dota tape, pet, uh, cat, the um, specialized types of MRI, specialized types of endoscopy. There are all kinds of things depending on the circumstances to make a clear diagnosis of the cancer and determine how much it's spread. And after that, we determine what kind of treatment would be ideal. And then after we do that, and we have already been definitively treated at the beginning, and then you're talking about follow-up tests, then I think it's, uh, we then end up with a question that was just asked, what do we do to follow? And we can talk about doing uh, MRI scans or CAT scans or molecular imaging, various kinds of blood tests to follow the cancer. So that's just sort of general principles to determine how cancers are doing, if they're getting bigger or getting smaller, the best tests we have are MRI um, with contrast and CT with contrast. MRI has the advantage of no radiation at all, no X-ray radiation, and it's also extremely accurate. So very often we use MRI of abdomen and pelvis for the chest and CT without contrast is actually a good way of imaging the chest. And um, that can be done, or in other cases, it's all with um, CT scan, so it depends on the individual. We have a new test called gallium-68 dotatate PET, which many of you have already heard about, which is a kind of molecular imaging that can show little teeny tumors that are sometimes so small you can't see them by any other modality. A wonderful test to do on anybody who's been recently diagnosed, because if that test is positive, it means you can benefit from somatostatin analog therapy, which means things like octreotide or vanreotide. As far as I'm concerned, an octreo scan is an obsolete version of a previous generation test that gives similar information to a net spot, but just it's not nearly as good. A, a net spot is the gallium-68 dotatate pet cat, okay? That test can detect tumors that are just little itty bitty tumors that are just a couple of millimeters across. In a TRIA scan, you're lucky if you can see a blurry picture of a tumor that's uh, 15 millimeters across. It's just not a high resolution test. It's not as good a test. In addition, the TRIA scan requires going back and having repeat imaging for multiple days. It requires lying for as much as four hours at a time on a hard table getting pictures. And at the end of the day, the pictures you get from the atria scan are nearly as good as the gallium scan, which can be done in one hour or less. And it's just um, the gallium scan even uses less radiation than the atria scan. So there's no advantage at all for doing an atria scan. And the only reason why it's ever done at all, I think, nowadays is just certain centers don't have the gallium dotate pet available, so they order the atria scan because it's a old scan, which uh, anybody can do, but I would say, if it were me, I'd want to go to a center that can do a gallium dotatate pet instead and get the information you really need more accurately. Okay, well, the gallium 68 dotatate pet has just become widely available in the United States over the last year or two, and not everybody knows how to do it. In addition, the gallium 68 dotatate PET is, is best done at a center that has a high enough volume of neuroendocrine tumors that they do the tests a lot and know how to interpret the tests. Because otherwise, you can have all kinds of normal activity on those studies that can be misinterpreted as cancer, and people won't know exactly what they're looking at. Like with any diagnostic test, there's a certain learning curve and it's best to have a nuclear medicine doctor who does these on a regular basis. So uh, but <clears throat> hospitals that have a very low volume of neuroendocrine tumors usually don't invest in the extra effort to know how to optimally interpret these and even to uh, do them on a regular basis and don't offer them. 
So you need to go to generally a fairly major cancer center or uh, referral center or large hospital center where they see enough neuroendocrine tumors to justify doing it. And nowadays, in most parts of the country, the test is available, but sometimes you have to travel to the nearest uh, major center to do it. Okay, a great question. There's no really definitive answer. And the only answers that even exist in, in, in publications are basically recommendations made by a consensus panel of doctors. And these change from time to time when people have different tests and different consensus panels meet. But there are guidelines in, uh, called NCCN, called the NANETS, North American Neuroendocrine Tumor Society, ENETS, the European Neuroendocrine Tumor Society, and all of these organizations have published guidelines. Basically, the length of time that you need to follow a neuroendocrine tumor like this with scans is indefinite because some of the tumors <clears throat> can recur 10 years later, 15 years later, 20 years later. You don't know when they might recur. So I would say there's really no time. You can guarantee it would never come back. And um, you need always to follow. The frequency of scans depends on how high the risk is and how soon the risk is that it might come back. So it might be every six months, it might be every year, it might be every two years. If somebody has metastatic disease already that's been resected, it might be every three or four months. So it really depends on the situation, on the best um, recommendation of physicians. Well, if there are no other familial cancers in the family, and people don't have other carcinoids, it's extremely like, unlikely that this is familial carcinoid. If there are other people in the family that have gotten colon cancer uh, or other diseases, they can begin colonoscopy at an earlier age and have screening, but the, most people with carcinoid tumors in the intestine are not familiar. 